Okay, so today I will be giving specific book recommendations to you based off of things that you sent in. I did a community tab asking for specific kind of books that you're looking for, and I'm gonna do my best to recommend some books to you. I have some rules. I'm going to do my best to not repeat any books throughout the duration of this video, except for just like one or two books might get mentioned two or three times because there are certain books that just fit a couple categories perfectly, but for the most part, no repeats. Two, I'm going to attempt to give three book recommendations for every request that I answer in this video, just so that hopefully at least one of them you won't have read yet. Hopefully that kind of variety will mean that a lot of books are recommended and not just the same super popular books over and over again. I will break these rules, but only like two or three times. I'm gonna start off this video with the request that got the most replies of people saying, yes, following this, because I want these recommendations too, or yes, that's exactly what I'm looking forward to. Plus it's one of my favorites of the video because it's nautical. A book that's like Pirates of the Caribbean-esque in terms of adventure, seas, and romantic subplot. So, legitimately, this honestly and truly, the perfect recommendation for this is Red Seas Under Red Skies. And I'm not even being obnoxious. I'm not even just being Murphy. I mean, I am a little bit, but also this actually fits perfectly. Locke and Jean, our protagonists in book one, The Lies of Locke Lamora, are now blackmailed into being pirates for hire. And it's a kind of a slow start because, you know, this is a slow moving series. But once they get on the ship, it's pirate adventures, it's nautical sea life, it's men who do not know how to sail, who are doing their darndest to sail. I mean, they had some training, but they're also just, they are who they are. There are kittens that are very important to this story, and that is amazing. And there actually is an amazing romance in this, and I don't even like romance, but here I am pitching the romance. Now, if you wanna know my opinions on how all of this ends, I do have a dedicated spoiler review because I have some feelings about the romance, but, this fits all the categories, you should read this, it's the best thing ever. And another one that fits really, really well, that I oftentimes cite as a book that I love but don't necessarily recommend because I realize that I love it for my own reasons and that it's not widely, everybody else in the world probably won't love it so much. But again, this actually fits this prompt so perfectly and that's Frenchman's Creek. French pirates that have, that have docked in, where is she? London. In London, and Dana, our protagonist, is a someone who is twiddling her thumbs and not happy with her life. So she goes on a pirate adventure. She learns to sail. She has a couple of adventures, raids, bad, th she does things. It's a romance. There's so many things. It's hard for me to describe why I love this book so much because there's so many things that Dana does that I'm like, no, never do that. But it just, it has that adventure feel, that pirate adventure. And it does have the romance too, which is something that you specifically requested as a bundle. Okay, this is one of the books that I'm going, this is one of the prompts that I'm gonna cheat on. I probably shouldn't cheat at the very top of the video, but what can be done? There's just a lot of books that fit this really nicely and I'd like to tell you about all of them. Trust of the Emerald Sea is uh, a recent Brandon Sanderson publication. It, I, I don't know if he would categorize it as YA or adult, but really I think it, it fits fine in both, probably a little bit more YA. But the motivation for this was that he and his family were having family movie night. They were watching The Princess Bride and, uh, and his wife said, man, I love this movie. I just wish Buttercup had more agency. And so this is, in his mind, this is the a story like, but really not that similar to, The Princess Bride, where the protagonist, Tress, is the one who's off on the adventure, choosing her own destiny, fighting for what she believes in, and saving her true love. It's nautical, it's a little bit piratey, it's adventurous, there's a lot of really fun things happening here, and there's a bit of romance. Those are the three that fit this perfectly. Rapid fire, just two more real super quick. The Live Ship Traders trilogy is this kind of more on an epic scale. It's a much wider story and there's a lot of swashbuckling adventures. Again, extremely slow moving, very slow pacing, but the characters are alive. The world is breathing. It's very nautical. It's very adventurous and exciting and fun. And there's definitely romance afoot, but also tragedy. It's very sad. There's lots of bad things too. My final recommendation is the book that I think 
was what inspired the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. Don't quote me on that. I'm not 100% positive. I remember seeing that in a Google once. You know, it is completely true. It's 100% absolutely true as long as you don't Google. This is what inspired the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. And um, I don't know, it's not a perfect book, but I do love it. I feel like every time I talk about it, people are like, that's not really that great of a book, but I do love it. And it is a pirate adventure with some real weird magic. And I love it. And the Pirates of the Caribbean movies has some real weird magic. I think it's fine. I think it's a great recommendation. Thanks, Murphy. I'll try to move through these quickly. I'm already doing a horrible job. A fantasy book that manages to create an atmosphere and really makes me feel like I'm there. A reader could spend hours and hours reading this book without noticing that a single minute has passed, like Tolkien or Rob. Hob. <laughs> like to Tolkien or Hob. So the two examples you gave, Tolkien and Hob, are two very slow-paced, slow-moving, very environmental, very beautiful, I think, beautiful prose. Um, um, so going along that, and they're also very wide in scope. So going along those parameters as well as being something that just kind of makes the world feel alive, I'm going to recommend The Name of the Wind, obviously. It's unfinished and frankly, it may never be finished, but, and it does have, it does have its flaws. <laughs> it does have its flaws, but it is so um, tactile. I'm in the world. I feel the magic. It's a very soft magic. Well, there's hard, hard elements and soft elements, but I would say mostly soft magic. The world just feels living and breathing. And I wouldn't, personally, I wouldn't put Rothfuss's character work anywhere near Hobbes's character work. But I do think that his prose and his world and the interest of his magic is absolutely comparable. I'm also gonna recommend The Ember Blade, which uh, I just read the sequel and I enjoyed it. I liked the sequel, The Shadow Casket, but I didn't like it as much as The Ember Blade, but it doesn't matter. This is an epic and it's very Tolkien-esque. He wears his Tolkien inspiration on his sleeve while still giving a modern take on it and doing his own thing. And I love these books. I feel like I'm there. I'm in the setting, I'm on this quest, through the landscape, not just like, I mean, who can do Tolkien like Tolkien does Tolkien, but Tolkien putting you there, walking through the setting with the characters, I do think that Wooding accomplishes something. He does a good job. He does something. He does it well. It's hard to be like, oh, this person's like Tolkien, because like, Final recommendation is a bit of a stretch for me because I read the first book years ago and didn't continue, wasn't sure how I felt about it, and I'm actually going to be rereading the first book soon um, because I think that I would like it a lot more now because I'm much more of a slow-paced reader, environmental reader than I once was. But anyway, The Wizards of Earthsea. Or is it just The Wizard of Earthsea? It's The Books of Earthsea. Again, I read this a while ago and I didn't continue on with the series, but what I remember about it is beautiful prose, amazing world that feels living and breathing and alive and journeying through it. So again, I'm not the person to recommend it, but I'm gonna go ahead and recommend it. I'm a manga reader that wants to get back into novels after 10 years. What I most like about One Piece is the intentionality and foreshadowing that Oda uses and allows the story to interconnect in very satisfying way, it rewards the reader for noticing details, looking for a novel that hits these criteria. Criteria, I got you. So first of all, and most easily, uh, I will say Neil Gaiman. Absolutely anything that he publishes. I'm holding up Neverwhere, but you can go with The Ocean at the End of the Lane if you want something that's a novella length. You can go with American Gods if you want something that's a lot more dense or anything in between. I think that Gaiman does a really good job of making his stories feel like a fairy tale, a darker fairy tale, uh, making his worlds feel alive, living, breathing. Again, it's one of my favorite things to read <laughs> is his breathing worlds. But I also think that he does a good job of, of really laying things out early on and making it all kind of intertwined together. I really, really love that about him. And he's one of the earliest authors that I noticed doing that and that awakened my love for this kind of storytelling. Then we have Mistborn, another author that very early on awakened my love for, oh, this all really came together. I grabbed Well of Ascension. Whoops. 
whatever. The Final Empire is the first book in the Mistborn trilogy by Brandon Sanderson. Highly recommend. Uh, it is a little bit of a slower beginning if you're not used to reading novels. I think Gaiman's probably a little bit easier to get into. But Sanderson's prose is very simple, very straightforward, very readable. So even though it's a trilogy, the books are a little bit thicker and it has a little bit of a slow start, It's they're so easy to read. So I really don't think you'll have a problem. And if you want an epic, because you mentioned One Piece, if you want something very large, The Wheel of Time. Now, I have my problems with the Wheel of Time series, but I also have many, many things that I love about this series. And if you're looking for an interconnected world, a complex uh, social and political system that is all kind of uh, connected and weaved together, heh, <laughs> weaved, and you're looking for an arc that sometimes can be laborious to get through, but overall is incredibly satisfying, check out this 14 book hunk of a series. I've always wanted to read a book with a character who changes personalities from good to bad. I got you. This is a little bit more challenging. I only have two for this one because I want more books like this too, but I can recommend you two. Well, it's one novel and one manga series. The Count of Monte Cristo, one of my all-time favorite standalones. This book is incredible. Please read it. Again, a little bit of a slower start. I mean, actually the very beginning is really, really strong, but then there's a stint in prison that goes on a little bit too long. And then we get into the story. And this is someone who's been betrayed and someone who's been uh, wronged. And at first he doesn't know who did it or how it happened. We, the readers do. And then there's this change that happens in our character and we follow him through that change and through the decisions he makes afterward. And this is so good. It's big. It's a classic. So the language isn't the easiest in the world, but I still think it's quite readable and you should read it. I don't physically own the other series that I'm recommending here, and that's called Death Note. This kid finds a notebook that uh, if you write the name of the person, their date of death and cause of death, if I'm correct, whatever you want, you can choose how you want them to die, um, then they die <laughs> as you wrote it. And so this kid initially picks up the notebook thinking, okay, I'll do good for the world. Uh, all the baddies in the world that are causing causing chaos and that are on the run, we're not able to find them, capture them, etc. I'll just kill them with my notebook, but absolute power corrupts absolutely, and uh, he goes through an arc. A completed binge-worthy adult fantasy, not overly complicated in world building, etc. just addictive for all the best reasons. I have three actual recommendations for you and one cheat. The Bone Shard, uh, this is the Drowning Empire series. First book is The Bone Shard Daughter. I actually just finished the third book, the conclusion to the trilogy. This is not a perfect trilogy. <laughs> there are things that are flawed about it and uh, things that are annoying. But if you want a trilogy that at least for me drew me in, was complicated enough to keep me going and wanting to piece things together, but also easy enough to read and familiar enough that it was, I could breeze through it. And something that I, after reading the last book, I call this trilogy candy. I don't think it's perfect for everyone, but for me, it was just a fast, fun, really enjoyable read. I'll also recommend a series that didn't work for me, but works for everybody else, it seems. And that's the Cradle series. I think he either just published the final book in the series or he's going to later this year, maybe. I'm not positive on that. But the point is that the series is basically completed if it's not completed already. And it's a long series, there's like 18 books or something crazy. So you have plenty to binge. But it's a progression fantasy. It's very, very fast moving. It's an interesting magic uh, setup. We have an underdog character who has to fight to, uh, to fight and to connive and to think around situations to elevate in, in this progression system. I also just recommend this to anybody who is typically used to reading graphic novels, comics, and that sort of thing, and wants to get into novels. This feels very manga-esque, so I think it's a good, good one for that too. Theft of Swords. I haven't finished this trilogy, six book series, depending on how you look at it. It was originally self-published as six books and then it got picked up by a traditional publisher and they bound up the books two by two. So now it's three books, three large books. They're all published. You can binge them, very easy to read, really fun. I didn't finish the trilogy, but I probably will someday because I did really like the first book. I'm just a fool who's really bad at finishing things but very, very bingeable and fun. They're super fun. 
And my cheat for binge-worthy books that are completed is a series that's not completed. Rage of Dragons is a revenge plot and it's so bingeable. Only two books are out uh, and I don't even know when the third one's being published. There's gonna be four total, so it totally doesn't fit your criteria. But it's a revenge story that also has a brotherhood and romance, really awesome world. I love these two books that I've read so far and they're just so readable. Highly recommend this. I've been in a darker reading mood when it comes to my reading lately, so if you've got a recommendation for a story about characters facing adversity in a bleak world, I'm all ears. You can start with the blade itself, but these are characters that are morally gray, outright horrible, <laughs> living in a very bleak, very dark world, just doing their darndest to survive, really. But he writes characters and relationships with those characters phenomenally, very slow, very not plot focused, but very good. I also very strongly recommend Malazan for this one. This series is not for the faint of heart. It's not easy to read. It's not easy to get into, but the Malazan fandom, in my experience, has been so excited to have someone to, to go through this series with them that when you have a million and five questions, if you just go find a Malazan forum, they will so happily help you. And there's just a lot that you kind of just have to roll with because you're not gonna understand it until you get a certain bit into the series. But it's a dark world. It's characters that are written phenomenally, character relationships that are written phenomenally. And uh, they, are, they are trying <laughs> their best to survive it. We also have characters that have big arcs. So this would also fit a series that has characters that start good and end up going down darker paths as well as characters, you know, just characters that move. They move. They change the world and their circumstances change them. Excellent series. Excellent series. Very difficult to read. Excellent series. And then for more uh, real world settings, I would recommend My Dark Vanessa, uh, which is about grooming. So like know what you're getting into because it's horrible, but it is dark and it's written very bluntly and very um, honestly, it's very hard to read, but it, it has stuck with me. And pretty much anything by Tiffany D. Jackson, uh, Monday's Not Coming is still my favorite of hers. This is a, following a child or following a girl whose best friend was, has disappeared. Her best friend disappeared and she's trying to get help and nobody's listening and it's horrifying. Dark, real world issues written just very, here it is, here's what's happened, here's what happens, and here's what we need to be doing, kind of fiction. A book series with funny characters, but the book is taken seriously with good themes and has good friendships. Have I introduced you to my good friend One Piece? If you're into manga, if you'll try manga, just try One Piece, I beg of you, because that's what you just described and I love it. I also think that Malazan fits this one very, very well. This is a very dark series with a whole lot of humor that kind of sustains you through the tragedy. And a recent love of mine, Don Quixote. This is satire. It's hilarious, but it's also very serious. Um, you know, it's constantly has me laughing. Don Quixote himself is a madman truly, and gets himself into the most ridiculous shenanigans, but it's also very themes heavy and um, <laughs> goes in a direction that I wasn't expecting. I'm not quite done with it yet as, at the time that I'm filming this, but this book has been a, a joy to read. I've been in an eco, environmental, nature, tropical kind of mood. I want to read something uh, about nature that is not a nonfiction book, a fiction story that I can feel the rain when they talk about it, or I can smell the flowers and the plants. Vivid story with colors of nature, maybe a rainforest. This is a great request and I wish I had more answers for you. I will recommend The Monk and the Robot. I think that this is the truest answer that I can give because a lot of it is just walking through the trees, walking through the forest, loving nature. It's a sci-fi that's very, very hopeful while also being very down to earth and talking about mental health. And just because the world is getting better doesn't mean that I'm always happy. And you know, a lot of, a lot of good stuff in there. Very, 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 very short, uh, but very nature 
focused. I'll also recommend the Lady Trent series, which I can grab as well. I'm tired of getting up. I'll recommend the Lady Trent series. The first book is called A Natural History of Dragons. Uh, I think this is book three, The Tropic of Serpents, but I think that this is the one that fits what you're asking for the most. She's in a rainforest, she's in a tropical setting, studying dragons. And I think that her imagery is vivid and beautiful and I love it. And I'll also recommend Treasure Island, which you maybe have heard of. Pirate adventure on an island. Very, I just feel like I'm there. And in fact, every time we go, every time, as if I've been there so many times, someday I'll be able to say every time and I'll mean it. The two times that I've been to Puerto Rico, just walking through the rainforest, my cousin and I look at each other and we're like, we're in Treasure Island, we're here. It just, I love it. A mystery set on an island with a group of people being there for a specific event, or maybe a spooky haunted house horror. I would love to hear some of your recs for those kinds of books. Um, yeah, so the obvious first two answers to give you would be uh, and Then There Were None by Agatha Christie for the Mystery Island, and for The Haunted House, it would be The Haunting of Hill House, which is excellent, I highly recommend that. But if you want three that are not the most obvious answers, I will get up to tell you more. Okay, so we have The Woman in Black, which is absolutely a haunted house story. Uh, this guy, I'm trying to remember how it started. I believe this man is attending a funeral and then he sees a woman in black and then he starts asking questions and he finds out that there's this house in this town that's haunted and the woman in black is from that house and she appears there and like the whole town is kind of aware of this house, but we don't talk about it. We don't, it's been a minute since I've read this one, but I'm pretty sure that I'm describing this well. It's very creepy, very slow build kind of horror, very, that's the kind that I like, is more about like building tension instead of just boo. Mapping the Interior uh, is about a boy whose father has recently died and um, it's not really a haunted house, but his ghost is in the house and appearing to this boy. And this, I would say, if you are interested in something that's very short, that kind of is, I feel like it really is reminiscent of Pet Cemetery. I mean, it's dealing with a lot of different topics. It's dealing with bullying, it's dealing with identity, it's dealing with the cycle of your father, it's dealing with uh, reality versus truth and a whole bunch of things. But as far as the direction that it goes in, um, by the end, I was like, oh man, I just read something on a similar plane to Pet Cemetery. I really, really loved this. And Dead Silence, which is a book that I was very disappointed in the ending of, but I still think that the experience of reading it up to the ending was worth it. This is actually, this takes place in space, so it's not quite Haunted House, but Haunted Ship, they come across a ghost ship, one that disappeared and all the people on it died. And they go onto this ship and they see this horrifying scene of people floating in the midst of chaos, people having been killed and and very, it's very vivid descriptions of the state of duress they were in when everything just kind of froze or paused and what happened here. And they're trying to discover the mystery of what caused all this and, and it was always so good. Again, disappointed in the ending, but worth it anyway. A recommendation for someone who loved the Hunger, Ga Hunger Games. My fiance can't get into reading, but flew through these books. I got you. Red Rising is the answer. This was not my series, but again, I might be the only one. <laughs> Everyone loves this series. Um, I will say that me comparing Red Rising to the Hunger Games does upset some people, but I don't care. It reminded me a whole lot of the Hunger Games or a Battle Royale or that style of book. So Red Rising, that'll be the next read. But also Dark Matter, I think is a really good next pick. It's a standalone, it's a thriller, alternate dimensions, uh, character wakes up and he's in his house, he's in his clothes, but he's bloodied up He's in pain and everything's slightly wrong. His voicemail is different. The furnishings are different. His wife is different. It's really good. And then kind of more of a stretch. I have to get up again. And then kind of more of a stretch. You might try Alloy of Law. Uh, I don't have a good reason. I just think that he might like it. It's fast paced. It's fun. Good characters. Different. 
he might like it. A book for when you're feeling anxious and you wanna sit on a mountain and read about friendship and cry in your coffee about how much you love the characters. This is incredibly specific yet incredibly relatable. I'm not really a cozy book reader, but Legends and Lattes I think fits this perfectly. Cozy, adorable characters, very, very sweet, very low in conflict, just a nice read. I also just read The Bookshop and the Barbarian, which I think if you liked Legends and Lattes, give this one a go. It's very similar while still being its own thing. And I'm gonna recommend Nevermore. This is a middle grade following a kid who goes off to a magical fantasy land kind of a setup that is familiar to us. But it's so whimsical, it's so charming, it's so fun, and the friends and the found family that she gains there are just, they melt your heart. So this is more of a long form answer that I think would fit really nicely as well. A book similar to the Chimera Ant arc of Hunter x Hunter in terms of characters and theme and exploration. I'm gonna be honest with you, nothing has affected me like Chimera in the same way that Chimera Ant Arc has. Don't hear me wrong, I'm not saying nothing has affected me on the same level, I'm saying nothing has affected me in the way that the Chimera Ant Arc has. So I don't have a perfect example for you, but this is another one where Malazan fits. So if you're willing to take on an epic that's challenging, it'll be Malazan. I would also recommend Dawn it explores humanity, it explores <laughs> agency, personal agency. It takes an alien race that is inserting themselves into a situation and doesn't understand agency or understand value <laughs> of humans to the degree that I would, I would choose for them to understand. It's very uncomfortable. It's very uncomfortable. There are very disturbing scenes, so know that going in. But I actually think that this is a pretty good comp title. Just know that it's very disturbing. And then I'm also gonna recommend, oh, get off of me, A Little Hatred. Um, Joe says that you can start any of his series or standalones in any order that you want. His fans say, no, you can't. You start at the beginning. I'm gonna side with Joe on this one, and I'm gonna say that if this is specifically what you're looking for, then this trilogy, starting with A Little Hatred, is quite good. It takes a look at many sides of war, the unraveling that it causes in people, as well as many social situations that arise and how it's not so straightforward and it's not so simple and easy. It follows a lot of different people in a lot of different situations and their individual plights. I think it's, I think, I think it's a good one. Maybe I'm asking for the impossible, but I want a fantasy novel with great world building that isn't too long. I'm just recommending two for this one, but The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea and The Gods of Jade and Shadow are both books that I thought the world building was better than the story. Um, the world building is what I read these books for. They're both short. Uh, this one follows a girl who, I think he's the ocean god, the god of the ocean, uh, causes storms and things that are horrible for her tiny little village. And so once a year, they sacrifice a girl to the ocean god, to the god of the ocean, uh, to be potentially his wife, to subdue him and save everybody else. But he, the idea is someday he'll pick a wife and stick with her, hasn't worked out yet. Our character sacrifices herself and we explore that realm on, under the sea. It's amazing. Um, and then Gods of Jade and Shadow, she awakens a Mayan god of death and has to go on a quest to collect his items. Both of these do turn into a romance, so fair warning going in, but the world, the world is what I read these for. Okay, I'm going to end on this one because I feel like I've been recording for a really long time. Let me check. 40, okay, I've been recording for 40 minutes. This video is long enough. I'm gonna end on this one. Hit me with a literary equivalent along the lines of Robin Hood Men in Tights or Monty Python in the Holy Grail. I want something that feels epic, but will still leave me laughing out loud. Please go beyond hitchhikers. Okay, all right, okay. There is no beyond hitchhikers. Let's establish that right now. I realize you're just saying that because hitchhikers is the obvious answer and you've already read hitchhikers, but I'm still gonna be offended because there is no Beyond Hitchhikers. However, if you haven't picked up Discworld yet, you should. I would also recommend Discworld for One Piece fans if any of you are here today. But it's hilarious, it's very large, large series, and there's a lot of different arcs and storylines that kind of intertwine within each other. A lot of true, true topics that Terry tackles that are worth discussing and the way he presents them and the way he tackles them just 
craves to be discussed. I've been loving going through Pratchett's work. Obviously I have to follow up that recommendation with One Piece. It's very funny. It's very lighthearted and fun adventure. Uh, laughs, great time with so much depth to it and so much, again, that screams to be discussed. A lot of intricacies, a lot of weaving things together. Y'all, Discworld in One Piece. Again, I'm gonna throw Don Quixote out there. I think it fits and I think you should read it. I know it's intimidating, but it's worth it. I haven't finished it yet. And finally, to not just end the final question on repeating other things, I'll give you a new one. Kings of the Wild. So this is a D&D-esque book. Uh, actually, I think this is a D&D session or series of sessions that he just novelized. But it's these men who were once monster hunters. I don't remember what their title was, uh, but they, they were once men who went out and and conquered beasts and saved the village and they weren't really heroes, but you know, they did the job. And now they're all washed up and retired. They're married, they've got kids, they're old, they're, they're, they aren't in their athletic prime and they're getting the band back together and they're gonna go on another quest and it's lighthearted and it's goofy and it's funny, but it's also surprisingly deep, uh, especially at the end. I did not expect it to make me cry, and here I am. Although anything makes me cry, so it's really not that impressive. There you go, that is a whole lot of recommendations. I hope you enjoyed this video. There were a lot more requests for a lot more types of books, but I tried to get a good variety of different styles of things that people were looking for. I hope you enjoyed this. Feel free to make more requests in the comments if you have something specific that you want. Feel free to comment about it I'm sure people will come along and give you recommendations for what you're looking for. I post videos every Monday and Friday on this channel, Tuesdays and Thursdays, on my review channel where I do dedicated reviews and weekly reading vlogs every single week. I'll see you again soon. Bye.